This video will demonstrate how to calculate federal income tax withholding using both the wage bracket and the percentage method. In our example, Jordan is single, he has three federal withholding allowances, and he's earned a monthly gross pay of $3,300. He contributed $150 to a flex spending account during the period. So we're going to calculate his federal withholding and our first step is going to be to determine his taxable pay. So remember he had contributed the $150 to flex spending. Sometimes employers may offer their employees flexible spending or cafeteria plans where the employee can deduct amounts from his or her check to pay specific qualified expenses like maybe medical expenses or dependent care costs. These deductions are not taxed for federal income tax, so they will always be deducted from gross pay before we calculate the federal withholding. So we've taken the $150 from his $3,300 gross pay, and that brings his earnings, taxable earnings, to $3,150. So first we're going to use the wage bracket method. So that means we have to go over to our wage brackets Jordan was paid monthly, so we have to find the page for the monthly uh, pay period. Okay. All right, and he was single, so we'll have to make sure we have um, the correct page. Here's monthly and single, and he has earned thirty-one fifty in taxable pay. So here we are. His income falls between this 3125 and 3165 range. So if we go over to the number of withholding allowances, we see that his withholding for this month is $200. Okay. Now we will um, calculate the federal withholding using the percentage method. So we're going to use the same taxable taxable pay as before. The method doesn't matter. You just work from the same taxable pay. And first we're going to calculate um, how much is deducted or is not taxed due to his allowances. Now that amount is built into the wage brackets but is not built into the percentage tables. So we need to manually calculate those. So we'll do that by going over to the percentage table. Here's uh, the allowance table that shows how much a taxpayer gets for one allowance. So Jordan is paid monthly. So he gets $345.80 per allowance and he has three allowances. So $345.80 times three will give us, a, give us a thousand thirty seven forty that is not taxed. So we will deduct that from his taxable pay and that brings us down to twenty one twelve sixty. And this is the amount we're going to take over to the percentage tables. Okay, so we will go over and find the tables for a monthly pay period and a single taxpayer. Okay, so his income that is now taxable falls between the 1102 and 3533 range and the table will tell us how to calculate his tax. It says that the amount of income tax is 7940 plus 12 percent of the excess over 1102. Notice 1102 is the amount here at the beginning of the range. The tax on 1102 is 7940. They've already calculated that for us. Now we have to calculate the amount of tax on the excess above 1102. So what we're going to do is go over and deduct the 1102 to find the excess. So 101060 is the excess over that range that we were given in the percentage tables. Now we're going to multiply that 
by 12% as directed by the tables. And so the tax on this excess amount here is 121.20. And we're going to turn around and add it to the 79.40 from the table, which they've already calculated on the 11.02. So we'll add those two figures together and we get $200.67 as our exact tax to be withheld under the percentage method. And notice that it is very close to that of the wage bracket. When you calculate um, withholding using the wage bracket with the percentage method, they're always going to be very close between, um, you know, about a dollar or two difference will all, is all that there will be. So that's one way to check it. You could check your percentage calculations by looking to see if it's about what the wage brackets have. So now we'll move on to the next example. We've got Kenneth. He's earned weekly gross pay of $1,000. He makes a 403B retirement plan contribution of 5% of his gross pay. And just like the cafeteria deductions or flex spending deductions for 401k or 403b or other various retirement plans are not taxable for federal income tax withholding. So they get subtracted out before we calculate the tax. It also says the city in which he lives and works levies a tax of 1.7% on employees taxable pay. So, um, the local taxable pay is the same as federal. Um, the state rate is 5% of taxable pay, which is also the same as federal. Okay, so let's calculate his um, taxable pay for, for federal. It's 1,000 minus the 403B contribution. So that was 5% of his gross pay, so that comes up to $50. So 1,000 less the 50 is 950 in taxable pay. So if we go over to our wage brackets, which is what we're gonna use uh, to calculate his withholding this time, we've got to find the weekly tables. Okay, he's, uh, here's the weekly tables and I can't remember if he was single or yeah, he's single. Okay, so we were there. We need to find 950. Okay, so we've got 950 on here in two places, from 940 to 950 and 950 to 960. So which one do you use? If you look at the top, it says at least 940 but less than 950. So he, since he is at 950, we've got to come down to the next line. So at least 950, but less than 960. So he had uh, no allowances, I believe. Okay, so for zero allowances in that taxable pay range, his withholding is $116. Okay, yep, yeah, 116. All right, then for the state, we're going to use the same taxable pay, and we were directed to just apply 5%, so his state withholding will be 47.50. Then the local taxable pay is the same as federal as well, so we'll take the 950, multiply that times the 1.7% as directed, so his taxable pay or his local um, withholding will be 1615. Okay, let's look at one more example. We're going to use the percentage tables again to get a little more practice here. So we've got Peter who is married with eight withholding allowances. He earned weekly gross pay of 2350. He contributed $100 to his flex spending account. The city in which he lives and works levies a tax of 2.7% of an employee's taxable pay on residents and 1.9% on non-residents. So it says that he lives and works in the same city. So he will be taxed at the 2.7% rate as a resident. 
the state rate is once again 5%. So let's calculate his federal tax first. Okay, so we're going to take the 2350 and subtract out the flex spending to bring his taxable pay down to 2250. Now it's time to deduct his withholding allowances. He has eight allowances, so we need to go to the percentage table and determine how much he gets per allowance. So for a weekly pay period, he gets $79.80 per allowance, and he had eight allowances. So we're going to come back over, take the $79.80, multiply it times eight, so $638.40 of his taxable pay is, is not taxable. So we're going to back that out from the $2250, which brings us down to $161160. And that's the amount that we're going to take over to the percentage tables. Okay. All right. He will be, he's a, he's, gets paid weekly, he's married, and his pay was $1611.60, so it falls between the $588 and the $1711 range. So the amount of income tax to withhold is $3660 plus the 12 plus 12% 12 of the excess over $588. So first step is to find the excess over $588. So we'll come back to the 1611.60, back out 588, and our excess is 1,023.60. So we'll take the excess and multiply it by 12% as directed from the table to get 122.83 as the tax on the excess. Then we're going to add it back to the tax that's given in the table. Remember, it's 3660. To that was the tax on the 588. So when we add those two together, our exact tax to be withheld for federal is 159.43. So for state, we're working once again with the same taxable pay, and we'll multiply that times 5%. So his state withholding is 112.50. And then for the local tax, um, 2250 once again is the taxable pay. And since he is a resident, his local rate is 2.9%. 2.7%. So if we multiply the 2250 times 2.7%, his local withholding is $60.75.